Hello, I'm Cardinal Whirl, and I'm very happy to be back with you as we continue now our preparation for your confirmation. In the previous conversation we had, we talked about the church, what constitutes the church. Today, in this discussion, I'd like to review with you two of the three sacraments of initiation by which you become a complete and full member of the church. We're going to talk about baptism, and then we're going to talk about confirmation. Because we know there are seven sacraments, and each sacrament is some contains an outward element, something visible or tangible or audible, that has been established by Christ to provide us contact with Christ, the grace of Christ. And of those seven, three of them are the sacraments of initiation. And the very, very first of all the sacraments, the sacrament of baptism, parallels our experience of human life. Our parents working with God give us our human life. And then the first thing they do is bring us Bring us to church, bring us to the baptismal font so that we can receive the sacrament by which we become members of the church. We become now alive in this great gift, new life, the gift of the Holy Spirit. So let's take a look at baptism. And what, what is this outward sign? What is this, this visible tangible sign that actually lets us know that something very spiritual is happening. The outward sign for baptism is the water and the words. Jesus himself reminded us that we needed to be baptized if we were going to enter the kingdom of heaven. And in fact, when he sent his apostles out, as Jesus was preparing to return to his Father in glory, he said to them, go and teach them everything I taught you and baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So the essence, the heart of every baptism is the pouring of the water three times and the priest or the deacon saying, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Now, while that is happening, visibly, some spiritual activities are taking place that we can't see. Three spiritual actions are actually taking place simultaneously with what we see as simply the pouring of the water and hear in those words. And the very first, the very first thing that we recognize is happening is the washing away of anything that would keep us from God. We speak about the washing away of original sin because our first parents failed. They chose themselves over God and they left each of us with this, this taint. And so we need a washing away of that. It also, if we're baptized as an adult, it washes away all our personal sins. Everything is washed away that would keep us from God. But then, with that washing away is also an outpouring of the Holy Spirit. This is an infusion of the very life of God, God's own Spirit, the Holy Spirit, which makes us now a part of a new creation. That's saying a lot, isn't it? But that's what St. Paul tells us is happening. We become part of a whole new creation, a creation of spirit. And within us now, we have this spiritual life. Then the third reality that's happening while that water is being poured out is we become members of the Catholic Church. We become a part of the body of Christ. And this is really what baptism is all about and why it's so essential. We now are members of the body of Christ. Sins washed away, new life poured into us, and we become a part of Christ's body of which he is the head. He's the spiritual head 
we're the spiritual members of this reality that we now see, his church. But you're also going to receive, at the end of our entire program and your process of preparation, you're going to receive the sacrament of confirmation. And what happens in the sacrament of confirmation? Why? Why are you receiving the sacrament of confirmation? This sacrament is an outpouring of the Holy Spirit. It's a renewal of that gift of the Spirit that's been poured out onto us. One of the things that you'll hear in the Mass for the Sacrament of Confirmation is the reading about that first outpouring of the Spirit at Pentecost, how the Spirit came down upon the apostles as tongues of fire, that the Spirit imbued them with gifts. That's what's happening spiritually in Confirmation. And what does the sacrament look like? What are some of these outward, tangible, visible, audible signs by which you're going to know that this anointing of the Holy Spirit is taking place? How are you going to be able to recognize that this outpouring that took place at Pentecost and continues in every single confirmation is happening? Well, the first thing that you will be asked to do is to renew your baptismal promises. When you were baptized, most of us were baptized as infants. And that means that someone else stood there for us, made the profession of faith for us. Today, we're, as, as adults, we're asked, renew those baptismal promises in your own name, on your own word. And then, then the bishop will hold his hands out over all of those to be confirmed his hands outstretched, invoking the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. This is at the heart of the sacrament. And we see this also in ordination, the hands outstretched, invoking the Spirit. And then you will be anointed with Holy Chrism on, on that special day in Holy Week, the bishop blesses the oils to be used in the sacraments, and one of them is the Holy Chrism. Holy Chrism is used, again, in baptism, in confirmation, and it's used also in the ordination of priests. So you'll be anointed with this Holy Chrism, and then, then you will be given a sign of peace, a sign of welcome into the completion of your whole process for membership in the church. So what you'll see in that outward sign is that Pentecostal outpouring of the Holy Spirit, these seven gifts of the Holy Spirit. And one of the things that you'll be asked to do is to reflect in your own heart as, as you're waiting your turn to come up to receive that gift, that outpouring, to reflect in your own heart how much that means to you to receive these gifts of the Spirit that allow you to be not only a disciple of Jesus, a member of his church, but these gifts empower you to be a witness to Jesus Christ in the world. And that's really one of the exciting things about the Sacrament of Confirmation. You, with this new gift, this outpouring of the Spirit, will have an energy, just like those apostles did at Pentecost, an energy to proclaim in word, in deed, in the way you act, the way you speak, uh, the language you use, the choices you make, you will be able to be a witness to the goodness of God, the love of Christ, the presence of Christ in your life. No wonder then that these, these sacraments the sacraments of initiation culminating in confirmation. No wonder they're so important. Here you are now about to become a full member of the church and an active witness to the presence of Christ in our world. And I look forward to continuing our conversations, our discussions with you in the next discussion, the next reflection. In the meantime, may God bless you.